I do folks, how you doing? Just a quick one. <laughs> I thought today we'll talk about speeding. <laughs> I know a lot of people ask me about speeding tickets and such like and uh, and a lot of people are fighting this. Now a lot of, and a lot of people, there's a lot a lot of people isn't there? But a lot of people over the years, including myself, have written things for speeding but what you tend to find that even if you get a working model eventually they get a workaround on it and start fucking you again and the reason for this is really simple most of you out there are driving under the road traffic act and you signed a contract known as your driving license and that contract binds you to the road traffic act the road traffic act has certain rules and regulations pertaining to your speed <laughs> So if you go faster than their rules state you're allowed, you owe them money, because paying them makes everything better. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> yeah, you can commit you can commit any any small crime you like or any small offence, should I say, it's not a crime. Whoa, fraudulent slip. But uh, any offence you like, you're offending uh, offending the crown. <laughs> But uh, if you do commit these offences that you are welcome to do, as long as you pay them some money, everything's okay. Now, as I say, they do get workarounds on this eventually because to start off with, a great notice will bamboozle them. They can't do no with it. And then eventually more and more come in and more and more. And then it gets escalated, sent upstairs or to wherever. And then the, uh, the legal team get on it and find the workaround or find the the validation for them ignoring it and continuing now I can tell you something that works in absolute so far I can't say it's never going to get a workaround but at the minute it absolutely works fine for those that are traveling under the road traffic act uh, it takes a bit of forethought and I must say I don't give legal advice I don't often give a waiver but this could be construed as legal advice and I don't give that and uh, I'm not teaching people how to be fraudulent or anything. I'm just going to tell you what I know for a fact works at the minute. Now, if, for instance, your motor was in somebody else's name, and maybe if, you, if you've got insurance, you're a named driver on it or whatever, but uh, if it's in somebody else's name and a speeding ticket comes through to them, they are bound by the Road Traffic Act to give a, an explanation as to who was driving. Now, if they tell the truth and tell them it was you at your address, and they send this speeding ticket, or, or sorry, should I say, they send this, uh, this letter requesting information um, as to uh, were you the driver, but you don't open this letter, because clearly you're going to know it's coming, because they've had one, they've given your details, now this would be coming to you. You get a torch, for instance, at the letter, I'm just saying, you would be able to see the police crest on it through the envelope and know that this was it. Now, if you return to sender that, return to sender, do not recognize you, do not understand your intent, but there, no assured value, or no international treaty with you, no assured value, no liability. That's what you would write on the front of it and cover the window with a sticker and you send that back now the original man or woman who had it in their name would possibly get another letter back possibly sometimes sometimes not stating that they couldn't get in touch with you well they would just write back saying that's none of my business the only the only obligation i've got is to tell you who was driving at the time and I've given you that information. End of. End of. End of. They can't get in touch with you. They have got no joinder with you. They have no contract with you. You haven't opened the letter. You haven't received any notification of a requirement to give any details. You are not liable. At the minute, at the minute I can tell you that is 
whether they get a workaround for it one day, I'm not going to hold any responsibility or liability to. But I can tell you, everybody that's telling you this way and that way, if they've got a good way, fantastic. Eventually, they get a workaround, as they have done with many of mine that I've done, and uh, and they get quite tenacious. The trick is to be as tenacious back. That's the thing, and to certainly not walk into any of their uh, places of business. That's another thing. <laughs> as I say all the time, administrative courts, administrative courts are unlawful due to the constraints placed on Her Majesty at the time of her coronation. That is fact. They are unlawful. All magistrates, even county courts, unlawful. Unlawful due to the constraints placed on Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II at the time of her coronation. They are places of commerce. They are not courts of law. In absolute, they are not. They are conducting commerce with your trust, with your person your legal fiction, not you, the man or woman. So, put your hand down your trousers, grab your balls, <laughs> head down, arse up, and uh, preempt shit. Don't wait for shit to come on you. The, this is a wonky old world where the system is about as corrupt as it can be in a technically right manner. Everything they do is technically right. They don't actually break any laws, or very rarely do they break any laws. Once you do something correctly and they proceed, then they do break laws. And unfortunately they do. But very rarely in the normal course of business do they break any laws. It seems corrupt, and yes, it, to me and you, plain simple English, it's corrupt as a motherfucker. But the point is they are always technically on the right side of the law. They're very, very clever. It's criminal genius what this system does to you. You're a slave in absolute, but you're a slave because you consent. Always you consent. Folks, even though some folks realise this, they don't take it to heart and they still make the wrong moves which consent. So you have to stop consenting to this shit. But that, as it stands, is a speeding solution. But you have to preempt this shit. Um, yeah, they work on technicalities, you work on technicalities. Are you doing anything wrong? Absolutely not. Give your motor to somebody else and put it into trust to them. You don't have to write a trust, it's a verbal trust. You give them the legal title, you are the beneficiary, you get the equitable use of it. Or the beneficial use of it, should I say. So, uh, hmm preempt the bollocks. It's a wonky old world out there. <laughs> but hey, what can I say? There's one for you. Just a short and sweet one. And uh, like I say, not legal advice, but <laughs> have a good one all. Ta-da!